So this is a really weird time for Apple. They seem to be listening to their customers and making changes to their product line. They've not only made a modular Mac Pro, which people have been asking for ages now, they've also fixed the keyboard problem on MacBooks. To be honest, as a Windows user, I don't really care about any of that. But now, as an iPad user, I can really appreciate Apple's newfound respect for customer input. With this new update, iPads finally have a fully fleshed out mouse support. There are other updates that are pretty significant, but I don't really care about that as much. Mouse support, in my opinion, puts the iPads in competition with real computers. For the first time, this stupid, stupid ad about what is a computer kind of makes sense. The biggest change is that now you can connect a mouse straight through Bluetooth settings without needing to enable accessibility touch controls. When you have a mouse connected, you will have access to a white translucent round pointer to interact with the elements on your iPad. You can customize this pointer's size and color in the new pointer control settings. And when you're done using your mouse, the pointer would automatically go away and you can simply use your iPad like the tablet it was meant to be. If you know for a fact that you do not want your pointer to be hidden automatically, you can disable that in the settings as well. Under settings, general, then trackpad and mouse settings, you have a few more settings that you can tweak for optimum experience. Here you can change the speed of the pointer, which you should select based on the DPI of your mouse. If you find yourself in a situation where this is set way too high, you might find yourself frustrated enough to make a video about it and be told by the rest of the world about how stupid you are. Yes, I did that, and I apologize for making an underinformed rant that did not need to happen. You can also enable natural scrolling, which will make more sense if you have a trackpad. If you are left-handed, you can configure that here as well. The secondary click acts like it should. It shows a contextual menu for relevant actions. As you might have noticed, Apple's implementation of a mouse pointer doesn't resemble a mouse pointer on Windows, Mac, or even Android. Instead, it seems like Apple is trying to promote a new user experience for iPadOS. The cursor wraps itself around UI elements when you interact with them. Although this feature is very nice to look at, I'm not sure if this is ideal for precision and predictability. I've been using it for over a week now, and as of right now, I do not know if I like it or not. Previously, when you connected your mouse to your iPad, it would emulate your finger in every way possible. But this is not the case anymore. You cannot use the same gestures as you would use with your finger with the mouse pointer on iPadOS 13.4. If you want to bring in the slide over apps, you have to slide your cursor out of the right edge of the display. For home, you need to push the cursor out of the display from the bottom edge. In my experience, the gestures are a little more cumbersome to perform with a mouse. I think it might be a little easier to perform these gestures with a trackpad for instance. But with a mouse to mimic what you would do with a trackpad, I've found it to be more convenient to just lift the mouse and reposition it to reduce the travel distance. You can link custom gestures and commands to your mouse keys and accessibility settings. There are multiple sets of commands to choose from, and if you keep scrolling on the list of commands, you will see that you can link shortcuts to your mouse keys as well. If you link a shortcut to a mouse key, it would trigger the notification to enable the shortcut instead of triggering the shortcut itself. It's not ideal, it's not complete automation, but it's better than nothing. With this update, you also get something called the full keyboard access. It is probably one of the best features that iPad has released in order to interact with the iPad without ever touching the screen. This is an accessibility setting that will allow you to access every single UI element with just the keyboard. With this update, you can also link shortcuts to keyboard key combinations. Just like customization with your mouse keys, it will show you a notification that will allow you to run the shortcut. You can do that by going to accessibility, keyboard, full keyboard access, and commands. If you scroll to the very bottom, you will see a list of all your shortcuts and when you tap on it, you can assign a keyboard-based key combination to trigger that shortcut. This is an amazing step forward in automation on iPad OS. I would love to see this feature come out of accessibility settings and become more front and centered, just like mouse support has. I think one of the greatest benefits of using a mouse is precision and predictability. But if your mouse pointer changes its shape and form according to the element it is interacting with, or it becomes sticky when you hover over UI elements, the predictable behavior of the pointer is then compromised which is why I think there are a few use cases where you might want to disable your pointer animations. Using a mouse on an iPad is very different from using a mouse on a Windows tablet. Every UI element is designed for touch first, and the mouse pointer is not ideal for every interaction with this UI. For instance, if you use two windows side by side, you have to drag them one by one. I'm not sure if a mouse pointer is ideal tool for such scenarios. So at this point in time, I think it is necessary to remember that attaching a mouse to your iPad doesn't mean you never touch the iPad screen again. Instead, 
you should always reach out and use touch to perform the gestures that might be easier with a touch-based input. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video. If this video helped you in any way possible, please hit the like button. If you want to watch more iOS 13 based videos, I have a playlist for you. Well, thanks again for watching. This is Geek.